It may look like you have a lot of cables in your Wii box, but it's much simpler than you think, and it's made so that each cord can only go in one place. You can't go wrong. Your Wii console box is where the games play. It's a lot like a DVD player or VCR. It needs power, and it needs to be connected to the TV. Your AV cord looks like this, with yellow transmitting video and the red and white cables transmitting audio. Plug the big single end of the cord into the back of your Wii console. Then find the input on your TV. Most of the time, these are on the back of the television. You'll just match up the colors and plug them in. Unique to the Wii are the game controllers called Wiimotes and Nunchucks. Not every game will use the Nunchuck, but for those that require you to use it, it plugs into the bottom of the Wiimote like this. The Wiimote takes two AA batteries. Remove the back casing and then place the batteries in like so. The last remaining thing to plug into the Wii is the sensor bar. Take the cord and plug it in. Place the sensor bar on top of or just below your television. Put it far enough forward that nothing will block the view. When you first turn on your Wii, you're going to be pointing your Wiimote at the area directly above the sensor bar. Make sure that the power cord is plugged into the wall, and then press the power button on the Wii. It's located right here. When it's powered on, the light should be green. Make sure the TV is turned to the input that you plugged your Wii into. If you're not sure, just flip through the inputs using the TV video button on the remote until you reach a screen that looks like this. The A button is the big round button with the letter A on it in the middle of the Wii mode. Press it. You only have to go through this setup process once. Now, point to the language that you want your system to use and press A to select it. Then point at confirm and press A again. Next, choose where you put your sensor bar. This will allow you to point your Wiimote directly at the TV screen, which feels more natural. Press Confirm. Next, use the cursor to set the current date and time. Now, choose whether you have a widescreen or a standard TV screen. Most newer, flat TVs will be widescreen. Press A to skip through the dialog. Next, you have to give your console a name. This will be used to identify your console if you play games over the internet. Point the cursor at the white bar and press the A button. This brings up the on-screen keyboard. Type in a name for your console by pointing at each letter and pressing the A button. Press OK, and then press Confirm. All right, one more step. What we have to do now is select our country of residence. And we are not going to use parental controls. Um, if we have kids playing games that might not be age appropriate, uh, we would want to use the parental controls, but for now, we're going to leave them turned off. Now, we're going to place a game disc into the console and start playing. If your system is horizontal, make sure the label faces up. If it's vertical, make sure that the label is facing towards the right. Just slip the disc into the disc slot, and it should slide the rest of the way automatically. If it doesn't, press the eject button located here. 
Once the disk is in the system, select the disk channel in the upper left corner. And once it's done loading, and you can tell that it's loading because the disks are spinning, but once it finishes loading the game, you can press start and you're ready to play.